In this video, I will walk you through free response question number three from the 2022 AP Calculus exam. Let f be a differentiable function with f at 4 equal to 3. On the interval from 0 to 7, the graph of f prime, the derivative of f, consists of a semicircle and the two line segments as shown in the figure above. Part A. Find f at 0 and f at 5. In a calculus class, when they ask you to find the value of the original function at a particular point, you will almost always use the first fundamental theorem of calculus. The end value you are looking for, f at b, will equal some initial value, f at a, plus the integral of the derivative from a to b. In this case, they gave us the initial value, f at 4 equals 3. So if I want to find f at 0, that's going to equal the initial value f at 4 plus the integral from 4 to 0 of f prime. Since we are given f at 4 equals 3, all we really need to do is evaluate the integral of f prime from 4 to 0. And we're looking at the graph of f prime. And here is 4, and here is 0. The integral of f prime from 4 to 0 is the area between the x-axis and the curve between 4 and 0. This is a semicircle, so we know that the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. So the area of a semicircle will be 1 half pi r squared. And the radius in this case is 2, so that's going to be 1 half pi times 2 squared, so that's uh, pi times 4. This simplifies down to 2 pi. When we integrate from left to right, area below the x-axis is considered negative, and area above the x-axis is considered positive. However, we are integrating from 4 to 0. That's from right to left. So everything is reversed, and area below the x-axis is considered positive. So this is a positive 2 pi. That means f at 0 will be 3 plus 2 pi. We can find the value of f at 5, again using the first fundamental theorem of calculus. So the end value f at 5 will equal the initial value of f at 4 plus the integral of f prime from 4 to 5. We are given that f at 4 is 3, and the integral of f prime from 4 to 5 is the area between the curve and the x-axis between 4 and 5. In other words, this tiny yellow triangle, which has the area of 1 half of a square. So this will be 3 plus a half of a unit, or 3.5. So that's it for part A. Part B, find the x-coordinates of all points of inflection of the graph of f between 0 and 7. Justify your answer. We know that f has a point of inflection where f double prime changes signs, but we don't have a graph of f double prime. We have a graph of f prime. So what do we do? Looking at the graphical relationship between f, f prime, and f double prime, we notice that f double prime changes signs when f prime changes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. So let's use that since we have a graph of f prime. Notice that f prime changes from decreasing to increasing at x equals 2. So there is a point of inflection at x equals 2. We see another point of inflection at x equals 6 as f prime goes from increasing to decreasing. In summary, we say f has a point of inflection at x equals 2 because f prime changes from decreasing to increasing, and f has a point of inflection at x equals 6 because f prime changes from increasing to decreasing. Part C. Let g be the function defined by g of x equals f of x minus x. On what intervals, if any, is g decreasing for the interval from 0 to 7? Show the analysis that leads to your answer. 
Consider the graphical relationship between g, g prime, and g double prime. We are being asked to find where g is decreasing. Well, that will be where g prime is negative. So our strategy is to find the intervals where g prime is less than zero. So where is g prime less than zero? Well, if g is f of x minus x, then to find g prime, we will just take the derivative term by term. And of course, the derivative of f is simply f prime. And the derivative of x is 1. So g prime will be less than 0 when f prime minus 1 is less than 0. Adding 1 to both sides, that means f prime is less than 1. We are looking at a graph of f prime, and this horizontal line shows a value of 1. The red part of the graph is where f prime is less than 1. This is on the interval between 0 and 5. In summary, we say that g of x is decreasing on the interval from 0 to 5 because g prime is negative. Make sure you include these red statements which show the analysis that leads to this answer. Part D. For the function g defined in part C, find the absolute minimum value on the interval from 0 to 7. Justify your answer. When they ask us to find the absolute minimum on an interval, we use a candidate's test. So our strategy will be step 1, find the critical values of function g, and step 2, make a candidate's test. Remember, we are given that g of x equals f of x minus x. Taking the derivative term by term, g prime equals f prime minus 1. The critical values of g are the values of x that cause g prime to equal 0. In other words, where f prime minus 1 is equal to 0. Adding 1 to both sides, these will be the values that cause f prime to equal 1. We are given the graph of f prime, and this blue line shows a value of 1. So f prime is equal to 1 here and here. So the critical values are at x equals 5 and x equals 7. Now it's time to make the candidates test. The x values will include the endpoints of the interval 0 and 7, as well as the critical value of 5 that we just found. Let's start by evaluating g at 0. That will be f at 0 minus 0. We already found f at 0 back in part a. It was 3 plus 2 pi. So g at 0 will be 3 plus 2 pi minus 0, which is just 3 plus 2 pi. Now let's find g at 5, but that will be f at 5 minus 5. We found f at 5 back in part a as well. It was 3.5. So f at 5 minus 5 is 3.5 minus 5. That means g at 5 is negative 1.5. Finally, we need to find the value of g at 7, but this will be f at 7 minus 7. This is not a value we found before, so we will need to evaluate f at 7 right now. Just like we did in part a, we can find f at 7 using the first fundamental theorem of calculus. Don't forget we are given the initial value f at 4 equals 3, so f at 7 should equal f at 4 plus the integral from 4 to 7 of f prime. The integral of f prime from 4 to 7 is this yellow area right here. So f at 7 will equal f at 4, and that's 3, plus this area. This area is 2 plus 1 plus 0.5, or 3.5.
So f at 7 is 6.5. That means that g at 7 will be 6.5 minus 7, which is negative 0.5. We were asked to find the absolute minimum value, which is negative 1.5, at x equals 5. In summary, we say g of x has an absolute minimum of negative 1.5 at x equals 5. See Candidates Test.